they go, God, we've never worked in a place like this before. You're hilarious. Use weather, sports, and of course, all the local info you need to start your day. I think that pretty much sums it up. Yeah! Catch Talk of the Town live on 103.7 WTIB. What? Cable 7 in Greenville and worldwide at WTIBFM.com. What? Now here's the host for Talk of the Town. Yes. Henry Hinton. Welcome in, everybody. Hour 2 of Talk of the Town here on a Thursday morning, December 13. Good to have you with us this morning. Heather King is here. Trent McGee is here, and we have a special guest coming into the studio. In fact, we already had one. Tom McClellan was just in here. Tom is the uh, the uh, director of media relations for ECU Athletics, and uh, the new director of athletics, John Gilbert, is going to be joining us here live in the studio in just a few minutes. So get your questions ready, McGee. You got them ready? I'm ready. I've been ready. Yep. All right, very good. Uh, Tom hasn't been that busy for the past couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, you need more things to do. Yeah. <laughs> you only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, of course, um, uh, yesterday the big announcement about Dave Hart's new uh, contract. Mm -hmm. uh, one more year with Dave Hart as special assistant to the chancellor. So very good stuff. Heather is here this morning. Uh, we just saw pictures of her son's beautiful new haircut that <laughs> your daughter gave him last night. It was, I think it was a team effort. At least that's what I'm hearing. The, the three-year-old and the five-year-old teamed up to give Charlie a brand new haircut for Christmas. Yeah. It's awful. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It's it's awfully like awesome. The, the new Christmas do doesn't work, Charlie. You got <laughs> I know. I, I was texting Chris about it, uh, my husband, and I said, he looks like Dumb and Dumber, and Chris just texted back, if the shoe fits. <laughs> 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 so bad. Now, here's the question. Did Charlie want his five-year-old sister to cut his hair? It seemed like they were. it was a team effort. They work she together. May be, hey, this 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 is a positive sign. She may be headed to cosmetology hey, school. Hey, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever pays the bills, I guess. Charlie wants to be a garbage man, so that's what. Yeah. <laughs> and then he said we were talking about he his wants haircut. to be a garbage man. Oh yeah, he thinks he goes that, out to watch the garbage. Oh, guys? he yeah. thinks that the sanitation engineers are the best thing ever. Like he no loves kidding. them and reveres them. And he was talking about he wanted. Um, we were talking about his hair. I'm like, we're gonna have to cut your hair even more now. He said, yeah, I want a garbage truck on my head. <laughs> So I mean, I'm thinking of like the kids who can have heads shaved and like put little lightning bolts in. Charlie's gonna have like wheels and trash. Uh, okay, we've got a lot to do, and we got to uh, get some business out of the way before we bring in John Gilbert. Um, we a uh, couple things to mention. Number one, um, tomorrow morning live, the program will be on the road again tomorrow morning, as we often are on Friday mornings. And tomorrow morning we'll be we're going to be at uh, Great Harvest Bread Company. Uh, thanks to our buddies Greg and Kim Green over there. They've invited us over for the Operation Santa Claus drop-off tomorrow. So we're asking for new toys tomorrow, new unwrapped toys. Please bring them. This will be our last collection point. Uh, Greenville Fire and Rescue guys will be there with a the big uh, box, and you can bring them in and, um, and, and just feel like you're doing something great for other kids here at Christmas. I know Toys for Tots was a big success this year at WITN. It was. So, uh, and we got a bunch of coats last Friday. And we still want coats. We it will take your coats for kids. Bring your coats, and we'll have them dry cleaned, and we'll get them out to um, we'll get them out to the kids that are do not have a winter coat. And there are a bunch of them, by the way. If you go over to the public schools today, you'll see a bunch of kids that came to school today in a t-shirt. And I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Some kids don't even have anything to wear to cover up their arms. They have to go to the bus stop. I mean, th this this is absurd. So please, uh, if you've got coats in your closet you're not using, go in there, get them out. Don't don't clean them. We're going to clean them before we send them to the kids. And uh, uh, the folks at Bowen Cleaners have always uh, done that for us for free. And then we'll get them over to the uh, children that need uh, coats. But the big thing tomorrow, the emphasis is on new toys. And I'm taking my grandboys this afternoon out to buy some toys to bring tomorrow. So I hope other people will do the same thing. Um, there are a bunch of kids that need toys. And we... Um, we went ahead and cut a check yesterday from the uh, Embers Christmas show, even though the show has been moved to Tuesday night, so the Salvation Army and, and Rebecca and everybody can go out and start buying the toys that they need from the angel trees and things like that uh, for kids uh, locally here. Uh, and by the way, it's a big check. We're going to have a huge crowd on Tuesday night at Reimage Church for the Embers Christmas show. It, the, you know, and I'm, I, I'm not going to say I'm glad it got canceled, 
But, you know, it's closer to Christmas now on Tuesday night. The weather's going to be great. The temperature's going to be in the 60s on uh, – or high 50s on Tuesday. Uh, and so um, it's going to be a uh, – it's going to be a great uh, a great night, and we hope that you will come out. Tickets are still on sale. $20 adults, 10 and under children are free. Santa, Rudolph, and Frosty the Snow Person. Uh, I mean, snowman. <laughs> <laughs> person, the Frosty the Snow person. person, Frosty the Snowman will be uh, will appear at the show, and so bring the kids out. And, it, uh, and I don't aren't schools getting out this week? No, I think, I think uh, Pitt County Schools gets out maybe Wednesday of next week. I believe well, you're that's right. what I'm talking about. So Tuesday oh, night, yeah. kids will have to go to school Wednesday. So bring them. So bring them Tuesday night. You can bring the kids. It's a great family show. Uh, I talked to uh, Craig Willard last night. They're doing the show tonight in Roanoke Rapids at the Roanoke Rapids Theater. If you're up that way, you can go watch the show tonight at the Roanoke Rapids Theater. But obviously, and and, uh, and they're giving. Um, uh, the, no, let's see. They I think they did the show last night in Raleigh. I was talking to Craig. He was on his way to do the show in Raleigh. But I asked him uh, about the show, and he said, "Yeah." I asked. I said, "Are Frosty and the Rain and R- Rudolph and Santa?" He said, "Oh yeah, they'll all be there." So he's excited about coming. He loves playing the show down here because this is home for him. So uh, Craig Willard and the Embers on Tuesday night at uh, Reimage Church. Brought to you by Greenville Utilities, Suddenlink, Steinbeck's Men's Shop, Taft Office Equipment, Fantastic Sam's, and Spain Telecom. And, yes, tickets are still on sale at Steinbeck's Men's Shop and online. You can get them here at our studios as well, Arlington Crossing. Our 11 minutes after 8, going to try to save as much time as we can to talk with John Gilbert. So let's get our news block in. Here is uh, Heather King at the news desk. Good morning, Heather. Good morning, Henry. And good morning, everyone. Traffic in Greenville has been tight at times lately, and ECU's fall commencement will start at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, meaning heavy traffic is expected around the city and, of course, close to campus. Parking lots will open at 7 a.m., with the doors of Minji's Coliseum opening at 8 a.m. for families and friends of graduates tomorrow. That means the heavy traffic will align with the morning commute in Greenville tomorrow, and drivers will want to be aware and defensive as many visitors are unfamiliar with the traffic patterns around Greenville. ECU Police Lieutenant Chris Sutton says the university expects about 6,000 people for the university's main commencement ceremony at 9 a.m. tomorrow. This could exacerbate the construction that's been going on around 10th Street and around parts of campus. If you need more information about commencement parking and visitor information, there's the website commencement.ecu.edu. Developers are hoping to open a new live music venue in Greenville in just a few weeks after months of setbacks now. The State Theater in Uptown Greenville was supposed to open by the end of the summer then on December 1st, but utility and water issues delayed construction. The theater will be a live entertainment venue for about 900 people. City leaders took a look at the progress Wednesday. Developers say construction is finishing up, and they hope to have it open by mid-January. The city has been fining the company $100 a day since July 31st for every day that the project goes unfinished. A proposal that would require a new primary in the 9th Congressional District if suspected absentee ballot fraud results in a new election one legislative approval on Wednesday. The requirement for a complete do-over in the 9th District is part of a wide-ranging legislation piece that restructures the State Board of Elections and keeps information about campaign finance investigations secret. The State Board of Elections is investigating potential absentee ballot fraud in Bladen and Robeson counties. Leslie McCray Dallas, who works as a, contract, a contractor rather for Republican Mark Harris's congressional campaign, is at the heart of that investigation over mishandling of absentee ballots Harris defeated Democrat Dan McCready by 905 votes in November, but the state board has twice declined to certify those results. Those are your WITN News headlines. Henry, back to you. So you're telling me they're going to finally open the theater downtown? That's what they're saying, mid-January. It's like a, a year late? Seven months. Seven months late. When they're paying dearly, $100 a day. By since the way, July did, did, did you know that there are no seats in that theater? It's going to be a stand-up thing? So listening to you talk about they're having plays, and maybe I'm wrong, but I was told that there was just gonna, it was going to be like, the, have you ever been to the Lincoln Theater in Raleigh? I've never been there, mm-hmm. but apparently there are no seats. It's just stand-up tables and hmm. stuff. So I don't know. Hmm. I haven't heard that. But after watching the Avett Brothers show, you know, I was worried there weren't going to be seats on the floor at the Avett Brothers, and that worked out pretty good. So yeah. uh, you young people today, you can stand up and party all night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's check the weather for the weekend. It's going to get warmer, but it's going to get wetter. Here's McGee. Yeah, early uh, frost today, giving way to partly cloudy skies for the remainder of the day with highs in the upper 50s for tonight. Mostly cloudy, chilly with lows 
around 42 degrees. And for your Friday, cloudy and rainy by the afternoon with highs in the low 60s. I'm and for the weekend, we'll see 67 degrees for the high. I'll extend this <laughs> Thank out. You. Thank Sundays, you. Sundays, I'm ready. 56 degrees, partly sunny so skies. So disorganized this morning. Uh, this uh, news and weather update brought to you by Silver Care, helping Greenville area sil- seniors for 25 years. Visit them online at silvercareweb.com. Silvercareweb.com. All right. Uh, I, I take it that Heather is going to now leave us and go take Charlie to get a haircut. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Can't happen fast enough. <laughs> We're going to go to break, and when we come back, the new director of athletics for ECU, uh, John Gilbert, uh, just on the job, is going to be live in the studio. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Don't wait. Get year-end savings now at Greenville Toyota. Corollas, $159 a month. RAV4s, $199. The wait is over, and the deals won't last. It's the year-end savings event at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. All right, everybody, this is our team. This is our house. Now let's go out there and have some fun. Ready? Ready. Hi, I'm Luke Keekley, and just like my team, Pepsi was born right here in the Carolinas. This is our home field, and Pepsi is dedicated to making a positive impact in the communities all across our two great states. So here's to our house, the Carolinas. U.S. Cellular put towers where most others don't. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. Cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamson, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. When you're not feeling well, Vidant Health can connect you to the care you need anytime, anywhere, from any device. Connect to a new way to get well. Connect to Vidant Now. With Vite Now Virtual Care, you can visit a board-certified doctor online 24-7. It's private, secure, and affordable. See a doctor now at VidantNow.com. You waited for year-end savings. Now it's finally here at Greenville Toyota. Camrys, only $179 a month. You don't want to miss these deals. Camrys, $179 during the year-end savings event at Greenville Toyota. Question, what will you find on all over-the-counter or OTC medicine packages to help you choose the right drug and use it safely? The answer, the drug facts label. This label lists the medicine's active ingredients and purpose, how much to take, and warnings you should know before using it. Remember, even OTC medicines you buy without a prescription can cause side effects you don't want. So follow the information listed on the drug facts label. For more information, visit fda.gov slash drug facts label. A message from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. All right, uh, <laughs> we're, we're getting organized in here. Yes, what I was saying is that McGee may ask you some questions, but ignore those. Perfect. All right, we <laughs> we're thank back, you. We're back in the studio this morning, and we're very honored to have the new director of athletics, John Gilbert, uh, have uh, here live in the studio. He has joined us uh, in this. We had an opportunity to meet John at the uh, press conference. Well, the the uh, the press conference says. A week before last, which we're very excited, and uh, and now we're excited to have you in the studio. Good morning to you, and welcome to uh, Pirate Nation. Well, thank you. I'm excited to be here, and I hope I don't have another press conference for a little <laughs> while. The 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 two back to back, you know, p- probably the the quickest in uh, Division One A intercollegiate athletics. Yeah. Hey, there's so much there's so much uh, positive uh, karma out there right now. There was so much negative. <laughs> <laughs> three weeks ago and then two weeks ago, 
Uh, shows you how quickly things change in uh, college athletics. But everybody loves uh, their school, and uh, Pirate fans are very passionate. And it's been a long three, well, longer than that, three to five years here. And people want a winner here. So uh, I think all of a sudden there's hope that that can happen. And, um, and, and so uh, we're excited about that. But, I mean, I, I, kind of describe the feel that you have coming into this community and, and the kind of reception that you're receiving. Well, the, the, the community has been nothing short of wonderful. And it, it is, you know, from afar, uh, having, uh, you know, lived in the state when I was at uh, Lenore Ryan, you know, I, I certainly knew about the history of East Carolina and, you know, certainly all the coaches and the success that they've had. And, and, and so, you know, when I got here, uh, it, it was better than I had anticipated. And so mm -hmm. the people have just been warm, friendly, genuine. You know, I can't wait to get my family here and engaged mm -hmm. in the community. I, I, it's a great place. Let's talk about all things East Carolina. But first, uh, I'd love for uh, our audience to get to know you a little better. Sure. Uh, we know that you played football at Lenore Ryan. Right. Uh, McGee just brought up a point I didn't know. Your wife, though, was an All-American <clears throat> swimmer at the University of Alabama. Is that right? Uh, she was. She actually was a, uh, a student athlete there in swimming, and she actually coached uh, swimming there for, for five years. No and so, you know, w when you'll see my family a lot at, at all the athletic events, it's very much uh, part of who we are as a family. Uh, my kids are very engaged in it. I've got a, a daughter, Larson, who's uh, almost 20. She's a sophomore at Tennessee, uh, majoring in sports management, trying to talk her out of that. Uh, and then a son that is a, a junior in high school, so I hope yeah. to get him here quickly. Uh, but I think it's really positive for me, both personally and professionally, that not only was my wife a student athlete, but she was a coach. Yeah. And so she understands uh, intercollegiate athletics and um, – you know, when I'm not home on nights and weekends and, and uh, missing uh, things from time to time, she certainly, certainly understands the, the commitment that, that you have to have. And we understand your son's a basketball player. He's a high school basketball player? He's a high school basketball player, and, and uh, he's playing uh, right now at his high school and, and trying to get him transitioned and, and find a place to live both uh, temporarily and permanently. So, so you guys have not found a place to live, so we do not know where he's going to go to school. Not yet. It, we're, we're, it could we're, be a recruiting battle. No, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't think it'll be anything like that. But, <laughs> but I do want to get him settled, and, yeah. uh, you know, yeah, it, it's important, you know, Certainly, there are a lot of things professionally that I have to do, mm -hmm. uh, but equally as important is you want to make your family, uh, you know, stable and settled, and, uh, you know, they mean more to me than anything, and so I want to make sure that I take care of them w while still hitting the ground running mm -hmm. and fulfilling all my obligations. Don't hit all the details, but kind of carry us from your Lenore Ryan days. And we know you were with Dave uh, Hart at Alabama yeah. and Tennessee. Give us kind of a, a little chronology. I, I'll give you the Reader's Digest yeah, version. Uh, we and, just want to get to know you better. Yes. Uh, so uh, I was born in uh, Norfolk, Virginia. Oh, no uh, lived there in Virginia Beach. Wow. Uh, till till the start of fifth grade. You and I might be kin to each other. We might be. Or worse, you could be kin to <laughs> Billy Weaver. That would be horrible, wouldn't it? And, and then, <laughs> y you know, I, I, I was talking to uh, one of our donors the other day who has a place on Lake Gaston, and I can remember as a, as a kid we would go to Lake Gaston every summer. What so high school would you go to in uh, Norfolk? Uh, I would have actually would have been Virginia Beach. I would have gone to Green Run. Oh, I don't um, know that one. I was going to say First Colonial. Or yeah, something. no Green Run. Yeah. Uh, and then I moved to Lakeland, Florida, right between Tampa and Orlando. Uh, went to high school there. Uh, played at Lenore Ryan. Left Lenore Ryan and was a graduate assistant football coach at Eastern Kentucky University, one double A school in the mm. Ohio Valley Conference. Interesting. Uh, I was the wide receiver coach there. Uh, the, the first year I was there, we played in the one double A Final Four. We were ranked two in the country pretty much the whole wow. year. Uh, lost to Marshall 14-10. Uh, that one still burns in my belly. <laughs> oh, uh, so you come to ECU <laughs> with a, a feeling about having a Marshall loss that burns? Yeah. Uh, we, got, we got one of those. Th there, there are a few <laughs> that I have that I, that I can't let go of. 
Uh, Yours wasn't triple overtime. No, was no, okay. no, no. I'm just kidding. Just uh, <laughs> le- left uh, Eastern Kentucky with a master's degree in sport administration, and then I coached two years of high school football uh, in Lakeland, Florida. Wow. And and so um, a lot of good football down there too. A lot of good football. Now I'm not sure that I was really a, a very good coach. I was the, the offensive coordinator. We finished seven and five that year. The first year <laughs> I was there. And we had three or four players that played in the NFL on that team. Wow. At, at a high school team? At a high school team. Uh, that was the same school when I first started. And they were seven and five? When they first started, Ray <laughs> Lewis was in the second semester oh. uh, of his senior year. So, so I you did, coach Ray Lewis? I did not coach oh. Ray. Oh. Uh, but, but Ray was in school while I was I there, gotcha. uh, you I know, gotcha. after football season. Right. And, and then – my wife was actually offered uh, a assistant coaching position at Alabama. Okay. And, and so we moved to Tuscaloosa. Swimming and swimming? In swimming. Yeah. Uh, so she went to be an assistant swim coach uh, there in Tuscaloosa. And so we actually moved there for her, uh, thinking that I was going to coach and teach in high school. And so I arrived there in January of 1995, had a lot, a lot of opportunities to coach, uh, but they couldn't find me a teaching position in January. There was an interim athletic director at the time, a gentleman named Glenn Tuckett, who I spoke to last week, who's who's in his 80s now. He was the longtime baseball coach and AD at BYU. He came to Alabama as the interim AD, and uh, Coach Tuckett offered me a, a job at Alabama. It was full-time temporary with benefits <laughs> for, for the great sum of uh, 12500 a year. Uh, I took it on the spot. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, a year later, I, I, you know, got promoted to a more permanent position and a little better salary. And, and I spent almost 17 years there through a variety of positions. No kidding. No kidding. And, and that's really kind of where I picked up the relationship uh, with Dave. Yeah, I was wondering about I, I wondered if you guys had a uh, – because Dave – played basketball in Alabama. Right. Uh, and I wondered if you guys knew each other back in those days, but you didn't know him until he came to Alabama. That, as, that's uh, correct. Yeah. Uh, right. We actually, uh, the first time I met Dave, uh, we were working on a, a neutral site football <coughs> game. They're, they're all very common now, you know, yeah. where you have the preseason game. This would, it really was one of the first uh, games like that. Alabama played Florida State. Uh, this is back in like 06 maybe. Uh, in Jacksonville, and Dave was instrumental in putting that game okay. together between the two schools. And so I, I met Dave, and then, you know, a year or two later, uh, Dave is at Alabama, and I'm, I'm working for Dave. Uh, spent 17 years at Alabama, uh, almost 17, in a variety of positions. And then when Dave was offered the uh, AD job at Tennessee, he offered me the opportunity to come there as kind of his number two guy. Right. And, and so spent five years at Tennessee, uh, and, and then all the past two uh, there at Southern Miss as all the right. athletic director. And then uh, became the athletic director here two weeks ago. Yes. And we're, we're glad you're here. <laughs> all right, 28 minutes after 8. Uh, I'm going to get a break in, and when we come back, I want to talk about uh, everything facing the program right now and the conference. I hear there's some interesting things happening with TV rights in the conference right yes. now. I want to get into that. I want to talk about your vision for ECU. I want to talk about uh, how we're going to fill that stadium up next year. So a lot to talk to with uh, John Gilbert, the new director of athletics at EC- ECU, and we'll get a break and come right back. Merry Christmas and happy holidays from all of us here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Lease the new 2018 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo for just $289 a month. The Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo four-wheel drive for just $299 a month. And lease Motor Trends SUV of the year, the Jeep Wrangler, for only $302 a month at the Big Finish Sales Event. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us, come see us. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Carolina's greatest hits play all day on 1079 WNCT. Don't stop in the morning. Carolina's greatest hits play here. WNCT. This is the Pepsi for serious fans. Mm. 
and serious eats. Oh yeah, like Carolina pulled pork, carnitas, or Alberto's al pastor. Nice, Beto. This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite joint. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. Stop by Moore's Old Time Barbecue and grab a Carolina Classic combo with a free 20 ounce Pepsi. Moore's Barbecue and Pepsi, Carolina Classics indeed. How I define making, in the broadest possible terms, it is making something extant in the world that didn't exist. Everybody who's ever made anything is bringing something into fruition for a reason. And that act in and of itself makes us stewards of our culture. It's something that we're talking about. It's a response. Actually, it's telling a story. That's really what it is. And I include everything that could be made. Painting, sculpture, welding, all of that. Yellow is positive. When a kid gets their hands on the world and learns that they can make their fantasy play, that they can make their reality, that's power. And as far as I'm concerned, everyone should feel that kind of power. There we go. If there's something that interests you to bring into the world, that's fantastic. Go figure out how to do it. Go tell your own story. There it is. And so I want to know why you make. Let's go. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. Merry Christmas and happy holidays from all of us here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Lease the new 2018 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo for just $289 a month. The Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo four-wheel drive for just $299 a month. And lease Motor Trends SUV of the year, the Jeep Wrangler, for only $302 a month at the Big Finish Sales Event. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us, come see us. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Okay, welcome back. We are uh, very uh, honored to have John Gilbert, the new director of athletics, here in the studio with us this morning. McGee is uh, also here at the news desk. McGee, chime in with questions anytime, but not right now. Okay. <laughs> Because I want to get back to some things with John, but I'm sure we'll do, uh, love to hear what you have to say as well. Uh, John Gilbert, who became the new director of athletics at ECU uh, two weeks ago. And, um, you know, I, I guess the, the big question everybody wants to know is uh, what your thoughts are about how to turn the program around financially. Um, you know, I ask you this question when we do at the press uh, conference. I'm like, why, why would you take a job with all the negative publicity out there and the athletic department is uh, it's been very public that it's struggling financially yeah and uh, season ticket sales were bad this year they were bad the year before but they were worse this year and by the end of the season with all the losses and the frustration uh, people had stopped coming to the game so you know your thoughts about why you you see yourself as the guy that can be the captain of the ship that turns it around well, well I, I think number one is uh, we, we've got great history and great tradition here uh, and, and so there are a lot of schools, I'm not going to name them, but there are a lot of schools that if, if they win and have success, they still can't put 50,000 people in a stadium. True. And, and so I, I knew that uh, if, if I came, uh, was offered the opportunity, uh, that there was great potential here. And so it's going to take time. It's not going to be, you know, an overnight, uh, you know, turnaround. And, and really my philosophy will be to build it from the inside out. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the number one thing that I want to do initially is make sure that I am creating a good culture in the building where people feel good about coming to work every day. We're going to have a lot of heavy lifting to do. Uh, it's not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. We need everybody engaged. And, and really what I want is I want to make sure that our staff knows Hey, uh, you're you're being communicated with. You you know what the direction is. You have someone that will give you answers, and uh, let's all row in the same direction to get this thing moving forward. Because, you know, it's kind of like I talked about it in my press conference. It's not about me. I don't have all the answers. Uh, I'm going to engage everyone uh, to to make sure that they feel like they are a part of this process to help move it in the right direction. We really need a grassroots effort. Uh, certainly we need people that, uh, you know, can invest in us that can put their name on a building, but we also need people 
that are willing to buy a single game ticket to one of our sporting events. They're willing to join the pirate club at whatever level that is. I, I really don't care what level, mm -hmm. uh, but we need to, we need everybody uh, to play a part. That that's really who we are, and, and I think it's important that that we start there. Dave Hart just agreed to a new one-year deal. Uh, that's been rumored for a long time that he and Chancellor Staten were going. That cha the chancellor has been very upfront about wanting to keep Dave involved. Uh, and and I said earlier this morning uh, that probably wouldn't work <laughs> for a new athletic director, new AD coming in doesn't want somebody like that in that role. But, uh, but with your relationship with Dave, I would think that that you'll see that as an asset. Well, well the, r really, more of an asset is Pam. You know, Dave. <laughs> That's Dave, true. Dave is That's just true. He, he's kind of an asset, but <laughs> yeah. but Pam is the real asset. I got that. And um, you know, I, I say that kiddingly, but but I am serious. I, I look at really both Pam and Dave as being uh, being a tremendous asset to this institution and this community. They both have such great relationships, long standing. Uh, so. Uh, Pam and Dave will be a great resource for Katie and I. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll be a great resource for the institution. And, and really the value is this with Dave, in my opinion. Because he's been the athletic director here, because he has longstanding relationships, he, he can open doors uh, for our entire department. Mm -hmm. So uh, beneficial for me because I've got a longstanding working relationship and, and personal relationship with Dave. Uh, but but I think it's a good thing. I got one more McGee, and then you can chime in. But this is this one will lead us into other areas, I'm sure. Um, the every man out there is looking at this program right now, and, and this is what they're seeing. I mean, we're seeing some of these comments online in the newspaper uh, th that you know the athletic department is is hemorrhaging money. The chancellor has now transferred money from other parts of the university into trying to salvage it. Uh, we're spending a lot of money on coaches. We're spending all money on coaches that aren't here and things like that. Uh, uh, and, and the truth of the matter is we probably are in over our head on this conference, on, on the American Athletic Conference. I mean, I've seen that. You know, you, you see different comments about different things, but I just want to throw it all at you and let you respond to that. Uh, East Carolina moved into the Atlantic, uh, athletic, uh, uh, American Athletic Conference and hasn't had any success yet. And it and it was it a bigger step up than people thought it was going to be. I know you're coming into it now, but looking at it, I know you follow this from 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 uh, your role in different positions at other schools. Uh, did ECU make a mistake going into the American? I, I really don't think so. And and I go back to the passionate fan base and the ability to fill a football stadium. It, it really does start with that. Uh, so you look at other schools in the league. Uh, you know, if we have success, you know, we're in the upper third from uh, an attendance and fan engagement uh, standpoint. So I really don't think that, that it was a mistake. I do think that uh, in order to move the entire uh, athletic department and, and institution into a, a more prominent role from a visibility standpoint, mm -hmm. uh, this is a lot better league. Yeah. And, and, and so and we I, and we certainly complete compete in baseball. Uh, we do. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we have a, a nationally recognized uh, baseball program. Uh, Coach Godwin certainly has done a tremendous job there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I think from a visibility standpoint it, and where we can go as an institution, I think the American was the right fit for ECU. All right, McGee, I'll. I will uh, yield the floor to you for some questions for John Gill. My first question is that you mentioned, you know, one of your three pillars is engaging the entire region uh, of, of Eastern North Carolina. What's what's the first step in doing that? Well, well, I think the first step, again, is going back internally, uh, making sure that uh, I'm talking to our staff. I've got a, a, a good and better understanding of the institution, the athletic department, and our donor base. And then as, as we engage, uh, you know, I think it's important, number one, for me to be seen at, at athletic events, uh, you know, where our fan base can see me, talk to me, put their hands on me, so to speak. And, um, 
then permeate out to all the multiple communities. I've got to get out and be visible. Now, when I talked earlier about building it from the inside out, I can't start rushing out and doing that immediately. I, I really have to find a balance there where, where I can spend time with the staff yet, yet also get out and, and engage the communities. I also want to make sure that our coaches and our sports teams are engaging our communities as well because we want to invite everyone to come be a part of East Carolina athletics, whether that's coming to a free athletic event, buying a single game ticket, uh, being a member of the Pirate Club, purchasing season tickets. We need all those individuals to play a part. And I don't know if you've had time to really think about this yet or not, but how important will it be to you for ECU? And, and do you think it's important to maintain the in-state relationships in terms of ECU playing the NC States, the North Carolinas, the Dukes, the Wakes? Is that something you're going to go after and continue well, to uh, – to look at C certainly i think those games are important uh they're important for our program they're important for our institution uh important for our region and our donor base so i do think from a a scheduling standpoint we do want to play games that are regional in nature now the way scheduling works it's like putting a complex puzzle together because <laughs> people do schedule so far in advance but uh with with all things being equal uh, the the closer teams that we can play, the better for us. Can I be, piggyback on that and talk also uh, kind of transition us into talking about the TV rights for the conference? Yeah. Because the TV rights are going to be start to be negotiated soon, if they haven't already, for the conference. Every school now is getting about $2 million, I believe, right. from the ESPN deal. There are going to be other players this time. There's a lot of uh, – there's, there's kind of a, a lot of uh, talk that, that this – this is the first conference that's going to be out there renegotiating in the new digital era. Right. And that Facebook, Google, um, you know, other uh, platforms may come to the table with bigger money to lure the American conference off of traditional TV onto the uh, Internet. And, and, uh, and if the money gets good enough, you guys are going to do that because <laughs> – <laughs> number one, you need the money. <laughs> right. And number two, it might make some sense uh, in 2018 where it didn't in 2008 or whenever the TV rights were negotiated last time. What do you see happening, and is that going to end up being one of the panaceas to kind of help ECU out of the financial jam? Well, well I, I certainly think that a uh, new TV contract uh, is important for the entire league and, and us as an institution. I do think as, as you look at – the digital age, like my kids are uh, 20 and 17, you know, they don't have to watch it on a traditional TV. They yeah. can watch it on their phone or Plus a tablet. Plus now everybody's watching Facebook on yeah, their TV. Yeah, yes. So, you know. it, it, and I'll it, figure that out too if that's where the games go. Well, well <laughs> I, I certainly think if you look at the reach of Facebook, they, they reach a, a, a very wide and diverse audience. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I think as we go through these negotiations, everybody will be a player, uh, you know, to, to help get the best deal. And those are things we need to look at as, you know, television evolves where people want to stream it, you know, they want to watch it on the go. Um, you know, we need to be able to react to that. If all of a sudden that two million a team turns out to be eight million a team, eight million a school, I mean, that's a, that's that's not a, that's an easy call, right? Well, that that's a good number. I would take that today. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure I'm sure we can find ways to spend it. And I, I saw an article somewhere that the the Big Twelve expansion is going to be affected by this as well. I don't know. Have you have you gotten into that? I mean, I guess the Big Twelve is talking expansion again, and if the American does this new TV deal. Uh, everyone is going to sign this uh, pact in blood that no one's going to leave the conference until, you know, 10 years from now. Right. I, you know, what you're referring to is a grant of rights. Grant and, of rights, and, yes. And, and really what that means is the, the institutions that comprise the American, they would sign a document saying they are going to stay in the American for a, an extended right. amount of time where the commissioner can go out and negotiate uh, a better TV package. I, I do think based on some of the institutions in the league, they may not be willing to sign a long-term grant mm -hmm. of rights. Um, so 
I don't want to speak gonna, for them. Is that going to cost ECU money? I, I, you know, too early to tell at this point because I really don't know what kind of value uh, the networks will put on a grant of rights. Mm -hmm. You know, normally when you have a team leave a conference, they have to pay an exit fee. Mm -hmm. And so all those things would still play a part. So I would say too early to tell what what actual dollar amount value is placed on the grant of rights portion as opposed to uh, having all the members. Uh, again, uh, John Gilbert's in the studio. Uh, we haven't even talked about the football coach hiring. McGee, you want to ask that question? I was going to mention it. Yeah. <laughs> That or, or I'm that, sorry, I'm hogging the internet. No, that that, that <laughs> or you know, I, I know a lot of our listeners want to know more about. Uh, it, I write by it every day, but uh, the continued timeline and the prog uh, progress of the Southside Renovation Project. Where is that, and can we expect that to be complete by the start of the 2019 season? Well, I would tell you, it is my understanding that the the Southside renovation will be done sometime in May or June. Uh, to be very candid, I have not gone in it. I haven't been in every building in our athletic department yet. And so my really my I, I know that it is uh, they are working hard because every time I am moving about, uh, I see a, a small army of people doing a lot of good work <laughs> up there. And, and so uh, my my anticipated date is uh, May, June. Uh, but I, I do want to make sure I get around to all our athletic facilities sure. and and. Uh, spend time there as well are you concerned there's too much positive uh stuff happening right now and beliefs about i mean everybody thinks mike houston can come in here and put his fingers on this program <laughs> and, and all of a sudden poof we start winning and now let me say this it could happen because the guy's got that he's he's never had a losing season in his coaching career and uh, we know what his pedigree is like but you know he's walking into a situation here well it depends on what you you know i, I look at this team and think Wow, they lost a couple of games by a touchdown this year. I mean, a little of this, a little of that. They might, you know, they actually might be competitive in the league. What, what are your thoughts about well, that? Well, you know, I love uh, a, a positive mindset. I think that's really important. Just as everyday life, you, we've got to accentuate the positive because there is a lot of negative out there. Uh, I do know that, uh, you know, we, we or I, we work in a, a industry where there's a scoreboard in every venue. <laughs> so at the end of the day, if you have a bad radio show, uh, you know, not many people really know that. You know. Oh, I should show you my emails. <laughs> uh, but but if we if we have a, uh, you know, if if we're not as fortunate on the the field of play or on the basketball court, a little court, more visible a lot more visible yeah. and, and so we haven't had a lot of success on the field the last mm -hmm. three years mm -hmm. uh i i do think it will take coach houston some time uh to to turn it but i do think that uh with the staff that he's hired the ecu connections that that are you know are coming in certainly he'll get a head start on that yeah. Uh, but but I'm excited about the direction and the, the positivity. Really, really excited about having Coach Houston and, uh, and the staff that he's hired. Uh, here's my last question, and then I'll let McGee ask one last one. Um, what's been your biggest surprise so far? You, you know, I, th I think – Is it too early to ask that? Well, no, I, I think the, <laughs> the biggest surprise is just been how great the people are. Like we have yeah. – uh, in our department, we've got a lot of people – uh, that that love ECU, that love their jobs, that work extremely hard, and, and a lot of them are doing more than one job. You, mm -hmm. you know that they, they are, uh, they're doing a lot, and and so um, I've been really pleased with that to to see that that we've got a lot of good people uh, in our athletic department. Uh, I've also been amazed by the the uh, support that. I've received, you know, going into a grocery store or to a restaurant, just the energy of people of how excited they are uh, and welcoming. And, and uh, you know, I can't wait for my family to get here and, and experience that as well because it has been special. All right, McGee, last word. Uh, the women's basketball team, big game today against Liberty, 1130 Education Day game. Another 5-0 and in those games, so good luck to the Pirates. My question is, Chad Killinger, the interim head coach, has done a great job thus far with this team. Is the plan to continue on with Chad in that role? Uh, ha has that process begun to look at someone new, perhaps, to lead the women's team moving forward? 
I, you know, obviously, uh, you know, Chad's done a, a wonderful job. I believe we're five and two uh, game with Liberty today, and then I think Upstate on Sunday at two and Menji's, and um, you know, w- w- want to get through the season. Sure. Y- you know, I, I don't. Uh, my expectation is to to you know let that play out. Uh, you know, I really want to get in front of all our head coaches and spend time with them. And, and so I just want to, you know, move forward in, in that direction and, and we'll see how the future plays out. Hey, thank you for coming in. Thanks That's for great. having me. After the press conference the other day, uh, everybody was asking me, what's John Gilbert like? What's it? Do? What's that? And everybody, people here can probably confirm this. I kept saying, he's a really nice man. He's really, and you know, you don't get to say that about people much anymore. Well, so are you really as nice as you appear, or is there another side coming out later when we no, try to renegotiate the radio rights? No, no, it's uh, <laughs> y- you know, I'm I'm pretty simple. Uh, yeah. I I want to I, I want to win. I, w- I want to do it the right way, and I yeah. want to have a good time. Yeah, uh, I want to make sure we build a good culture uh, mm-hmm. in the building, uh, and, and I'm accessible. You know, I want to be accessible. I want to be visible. Uh, I want to, you know, ingrain myself into this community, and um, I, I look forward to, to well, leading the Pirates. I think you will fit in here like a glove. Agreed. I say this all the time. I said this on the air earlier this week. McGee can bear it out. I, I keep saying, if I didn't live in a community like this, I'd want to go find one. Right. This is a great community, and it's a fun place to live when we're winning. And we got, and there's been so much negativity in the last few years. I just can't believe how good everybody's feeling right now, and I'm so excited about uh, having you here. Well, I'm excited and uh, can't wait to uh, see everybody uh, at, at athletic events. All right, thank you, John. Good to thank see you. you. Thank John, you, John Gilbert, the new director of athletics, and thanks to Tom McClellan, uh, who was here uh, bringing. He's your handler. <laughs> uh, Tom is your handler right now. Uh, all right, we'll take a break and come back, and uh, we'll have a few more minutes in the show right after this. You waited for year-end savings. Now it's finally here at Greenville Toyota. Camrys, only $179 a month. You don't want to miss these deals. Camrys, $179 during the year-end savings event at Greenville Toyota. When you're not feeling well, Vident Health can connect you to the care you need anytime, anywhere, from any device. Connect to a new way to get well. Connect to Vident Now. With Vident Now Virtual Care, you can visit a board-certified doctor online 24-7. It's private, secure, and affordable. See a doctor now at VidentNow.com. This is the Pepsi for serious fans. Mmm. And serious eats. Oh, yeah. Like Carolina pulled pork, carnitas, or Alberto's Al Pastor. Nice, Beto. This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite joint. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. Stop by Moore's Old Time Barbecue and grab a Carolina Classic combo with a free 20-ounce Pepsi. Moore's Barbecue and Pepsi, Carolina Classics indeed. We've got a huge selection on new Ram trucks here in Washington, and we've got more coming in every week. These Rams are priced to move with huge rebates right now here at Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. The all-new 2019 Ram is here, and we've got a great selection. Lease a new 2019 Ram 1500 Motor Trends Truck of the Year for only $369 a month with only $369 due at signing. Or get 0% for 72 months during the Big Finish sales event. Visit us at WashingtonChrysler.com. Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Drive a little to save a lot. Sometimes coming home can be a battle in itself. Our wounded warriors need everyone's support to meet the challenges they face every day. The USO provides every American a way to support them and their families. What? It's good to be back. Join us. Visit USO.org to learn how you can make a difference in the lives of our wounded warriors. The USO. Until everyone comes home. 
Don't wait. Get year-end savings now at Greenville Toyota. Corollas, $159 a month. RAV4s, $199. The wait is over and the deals won't last. It's the year-end savings event at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got money on my mind, I can never get enough. All right, welcome back. Talk of the Town here on uh, Thursday morning. And uh, don't forget, tomorrow morning we'll be live on location for our Operation Santa Claus Toy Drop. Great Harvest Bread Company. Please come out and bring us a toy tomorrow morning or a gently used coat. All right, let's check a few sports headlines. Here's McGee. All right, get out and support the East Women's basketball team today. They'll be in action against Liberty on Education Day. The Pirates 5-0 all-time on Education Day games. Tip off a set for 11:30 in that one. The first ever meeting between the Pirates and the Flames. Tonight, the last Thursday night NFL game of the season. Hard to believe. It's going to be a good one. 10-3 Chargers on the road at the 11-2 Chiefs. Kickoff set for 8:20 on Fox. And Newberg is looking for a new head football coach after Steve Tapley announced his resignation on Wednesday, citing family and personal reasons as uh, his uh, reason for leaving. He's going to be moving to Guilford County, according to reports. You're not going to do the North Pitt score again? No, I'm not. You I'm probably not. should clarify that that score that you gave was last the girl hour. score, was not the girls' game. Score. Yeah. Either way, had, I'm not going to do it again. We had some contact. On I'm it. not going to do it again either way. <laughs> Let's just let it go. It was no, <laughs> North Pitt beat South Creek. We'll just leave it at that. Okay, 77 to four. It was 45 to two at halftime. It's cruel that you brought that up again. Well, I, I mean, I, I don't know what to say about that. I don't so I'm not saying anything. I, you know, I feel, you know, they're high school kids. I feel bad for them. All right, uh, don't forget, tomorrow morning, again, please, 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 it's our last toy drop. Uh, we are going to be accepting them at the Embers concert on Tuesday night, but a lot of kids uh, locally still without Christmas gifts this year. You can make a difference in that. I'm taking my grandkids shopping this afternoon to buy toys for Operation Santa Claus. I hope you will do the same. Please come out tomorrow morning. We'll be at Great Harvest Bread Company, Evans Street, tomorrow from 7 to 9, collecting toys, collecting coats, and we'll also be selling uh, tickets for the Ember Show, which, of course, is coming up Tuesday night, uh, our rescheduled Ember Show. So come on out and join us. Great Harvest Bread Company tomorrow. See you there. Merry Christmas and happy holidays from all of us here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Lease the new 2018 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo for just $289 a month. The Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo four-wheel drive for just $299 a month. And lease Motor Trends SUV of the year, the Jeep Wrangler, for only $302 a month at the Big Finish Sales Event. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us. Come see us. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. space you can't run down to the store to buy parts you have to improvise with what you have on your mission making is when there is something new that was not in existence at the beginning of the day okay it's an incredible sense of accomplishment when you have made something that's why i make now i want to hear why you make share your own why i make story today visit whyimake.org We've got a huge selection on new Ram trucks here in Washington, and we've got more coming in every week. These Rams are priced to move with huge rebates right now here at Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. The all-new 2019 Ram is here, and we've got a great selection. Lease a new 2019 Ram 1500 Motor Trends Truck of the Year for only $369 a month with only $369 due at signing. Or get 0% for 72 months during the Big Finish sales event. Visit us at WashingtonChrysler.com. Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Drive a little to save a lot. U.S. Cellular put towers where most others don't. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamston, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. Merry Christmas and happy holidays from all of us here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep.
We've got a massive selection of new Ram trucks, and now's the time to save on Motor Trend's Truck of the Year, the 2019 Ram 1500. Lease a new 2019 Ram 1500 for only $369 with only $369 due at signing, or get 0% for 72 months at the big finish sales event. Here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us, come see us.